Here at the top we have an example question. When 250 milliliters of a 0.1 molar aluminum chloride solution is combined with 200 milliliters of a 0.2 molar sodium carbonate solution, a precipitate of aluminum carbonate forms. Find the final concentration of all ions. I want to first look at a visual representation to help see what's going on. Here are our two solutions. Let's put the aluminum chloride in one of them, AlCl3, and in the other one we'll have our sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. We have these two solutions and we are going to combine them into one solution. So this solution ends up in here, this ends up in here, and we get our combined solution, and we will get our precipitate of aluminum carbonate falling to the bottom. So that's Al2CO33 forming in there. But that's not the only thing in here. Uh, you can see from the formula for the precipitate that it doesn't include chlorine and it doesn't include sodium, so that must still be floating around in this solution. And there's quite possibly an excess reagent in the creation of the aluminum carbonate. We have aluminum chloride in aqueous state being combined with the sodium carbonate. also in an aqueous state, making our precipitate Al2CO33, that's in the solid state, and NaCl in the aqueous state, because they have not participated in the reaction in any way. They're just still floating around down here. And then to balance this, uh, we need two of these, and three of these, and six of these. And if we split it up into the ions, we can see better what's happening here. So here we have um, aluminum ions, chloride ions, and sodium ions, and carbonate ions. And that produces, now here we're not going to separate these because this is actually creating a solid. So we're going to leave that in the solid form but the sodium chloride is still aqueous, so on the right we'll have sodium ions and chloride ions. Note, I've left off the coefficients for this. So, now it's very clear to see that the chlorine and the sodium is not changing from the left side to the right side. So we can cross those off from this reaction to get to our net ionic e equation, which would include aluminum ions combining with carbonate ions to produce the aluminum carbonate. Here we need two aluminums and we need three carbonates. This is going to be a very useful equation when we get to that tricky part and we're trying to figure out how much of the excess reactant we have left. I'm going to erase this picture to give us more space. Okay. Now that we have our equation, uh, we can look at what we need to do in order to actually get to the final concentration of all the ions. First of all, the spectator ions, the concentration of the spectator ions. Let's write that out here, spectator ions. The spectator ions are simply diluted. They have not reacted in any way. There's no gain or loss of the, the ions. Next for the aluminum and the carbonate, the participating ions, those are a little trickier. First we need to determine which one is the limiting reactant, and then when we find that, we will immediately know that that concentration is zero molar because it was used up in the reaction to create the uh, precipitate. The final ion that we're going to need to find the concentration of is the excess reactant, so the excess reactant. This one is a little trickier. To find the concentration of the excess reactant, we need to subtract off the amount that was used from the initial amount to come up with a new concentration. So subtract used amount. So that's our game plan. 
to find the concentration of the sodium ions, sodium here, we need moles divided by volume. Remember, volume must be in liters. To find our moles of sodium, we look back at our, let's see, which solution gives it to us here, this solution. So we're going to look at 200 milliliters of 0.2 molar sodium carbonate. So that's where we're getting all of our sodium. To get the number of moles, we take our volume in liters, 0.200 liters, multiply that by our concentration, 0.200 molar, and also multiply it by a factor of two because there are two sodiums for every sodium carbonate. Then we divide that by the new total volume, so that would be 0.450 liters, and that gives us a concentration of 0.178 molar. There's our first answer. For chlorine, that's going to work in a very similar way, and what you'll get is 0.167 molar concentration. So there's our second concentration. The next step is finding the limiting reactant, and we're going to save some time and jump to the answer here. The limiting reactant in this particular problem will end up being, remember this is the limiting reactant of the formation of the precipitate, and the limiting reactant will end up being the aluminum. So Al3 plus is limiting reactant. So once we know the limiting reactant, that gives us the next answer. If aluminum is our limiting reactant, that means the concentration of aluminum at the end will be zero molar. It all gets used up. It's limiting reactant. The last step, we need to find the concentration of the excess reactant. So this is step number five, and we're working on the excess reactant here. This is our the trickiest one. If aluminum is the limiting reactant, that means our excess reactant is the carbonate. So what we need to do is figure out how much carbonate we started with using this up here. And then we need to use the aluminum to figure out how much carbonate must have been used in order to use up all the aluminum. Once we do that, we could subtract it from our original amount of carbonate and divide by total volume to get concentration. First step, find number of moles of the carbonate and number of moles of the aluminum. So to find the number of moles of carbonate, that will be point 0.200 liters times the concentration, 0.200 molar, times in this case a factor of one, there's only one carbonate per sodium carbonate molecule, and that gives us 0.0400 moles. In a similar fashion, we could find the number of moles of aluminum. We'll find that the number of moles of aluminum is 0.0250 moles. We know that aluminum is the limiting reactant, so we're going to use the moles of, of aluminum, 0.0250 moles of aluminum, to determine how many moles of carbonate are required in order to react all of the aluminum. We're going to multiply by, going back to our equation here, we have a ratio of three carbonates for every two aluminum, so three carbonates for every two aluminum ions, and that gives us 0 0.0375 moles of carbonate used. Our final number of moles of carbonate will be 0 0.0400 moles, again the initial amount, minus 0.0375 moles, the amount that was used to get 0.0025 moles remaining. Last step, finding the actual concentration of carbonate. We take the number of moles that we found, 0 0.0025 moles, and divide by the total volume. 0.40450 liters, and we get a concentration of 0.006 molar, our final answer.